Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight, my partner in crime and coaching is Terry Yaffe. Here I am, in the dark, as always. <laughs> in the dark, we're all kind of in the dark. dark. But Wait, luckily... There. There, there. If I sit really there. close, there you go. You look freaky. You sit back there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that seems to work. Well, we <laughs> um, and. Okay. This is Coaches Creating Change. It is, it is. And luckily, you're talking about being in the dark, we have a person who's going to enlighten us. And oh. the person in the world is Magda Muck, the Executive Director and CEO of the International Coaching Federation. And usually, uh, Terry, Terry and I have, we we're like do this coaching creating change thing. We kind of dropped that in 2020 because we don't need to create change. We just need to survive change. So uh, what we want to find out from Magda is how to do that, what ICF Global is doing, and um, all kinds of exciting things. So Terry, I'm going to let you, Magda, thank you for coming. And, and well, yes, thank you very much. Always, always pleasure to be with you, yeah. ladies. We love thank having you. you on. We love having you on. So um, take it away, Terry. You can, you can have yeah, the Yeah, so first. I just want to say it's always wonderful to see you, Magda. I feel, you know, always have a special place in my heart for you. <laughs> And I remember Prague last year, oh, which yes. like a lifetime ago. Um, so with everything going on with this pandemic and, you know, everything that is part of it, what's going on in the coaching world and how, are, how is ICF um, talking about it and how are coaches reacting to it and how are they figuring out how to work around it especially with i mean with clients mm -hmm. very timely of course conversation and my gosh who knew early in the year mm -hmm. that we will be in september late september mm -hmm. with that right. and and we will still be frankly in a in a land of uncertainty so uh, so what ICF did immediately after the pandemic uh, was so very obvious to all of us was to create resources for our members, uh, create ways for them to uh, resource themselves, to have some ideas for how to work with clients. Many of the coaches, I think, were prepared to embrace the virtual nature of, of work, but many of the clients were not. Mm -hmm. so, so we were giving them some examples of, you know, how, how do you talk to your client in a virtual environment? How do you convince them that this is actually a good thing to do? Um, but, you know, we had, we had basically three types of resources. One were for a coach to resource themselves uh, as a person how to stay fit for purpose. I mean, coaches are, are impacted by this pandemic as much as any other human being, right? The other uh, uh, sector uh, or section, if you will, was the uh, uh, professional development resources for, for coaches. And finally, just very uh, uh, specific to the health updates. So links to reputable uh, places where they could find more about the pandemic in their respective uh, place of residence and, and how to protect themselves as well. But also, you know, so, so it came that last year we administered yet another uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers global coaching study. And that study, the field time closed at the end of December. Well, what do you know? Came the new year and the pandemic uh, came about. So very excited about the global coaching study. We uh, spoke to our partners at PricewaterhouseCoopers and we said, if we're releasing it in September, we have to have something around the pandemic. So we did the supplemental, uh, we call it snapshot study on the impact of COVID on coaches and coaching. It was a much shorter study, much shorter field time, and yet we had over 10,000 responses from around the globe wow. uh, to, to that particular study. What we found uh, is that 
there are people, there are coaches who are very significantly negatively impacted by the pandemic. About 25% would say that they were significantly negatively impacted. On the flip side, there is about 25% of coaches who said that they are very positive, they see very positive impact on their business uh, coming out of a pandemic. So in other words, we probably can create a story that we find a person to say, that's my story mm -hmm. from significantly negatively impacted to eh, not so bad to eh, business as usual. Yeah. See a little uptake to, Hey, this is, this is a boom. So what we do know from the study much to working virtually is that over 70% of coaches reported that they started utilizing virtual tools much more so than, than before. And so did their clients. Interestingly, uh, although I don't think surprisingly, um, there is an uptake in life and vision coaching. Uh, in other words, even some of the clients that perhaps would identify themselves as executive and business clients now come to coaches with more like, and how do I live in this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we see quite a bit of that. What we also heard and saw in the study is that uh, there was a, a certain delay <clears throat> in coaching services being, being, um, upheld. In other words, you know, there were existing contracts perhaps, and then there was a stop. It, it wasn't a cancellation. It was like, listen, we, especially organizations, we have to take care of business first. And then so many of those businesses came back saying, and we need coaching more desperately than ever. Uh, leaders talk about very new paradigm of being a leader to a virtual team. Um, they talk about their own vulnerability and being able to lead. There is the self-trust and self-awareness, something that we know coaching is so uh, remarkably helpful with. <clears throat> so, so I think what we are seeing is, again, that for some, uh, uh, it, it, it was a, a time of um, slowdown. And for many, it is a place where people either saw a great uptake of business, but also uh, many, many, many coaches engage in uh, just helping others. Mm -hmm. Coaches are so generous. It's a generous profession. And there were not a shortage of paid or pro bono initiatives mm -hmm. that that offered coaching support mm -hmm. to the most vulnerable uh, or the most needy uh, 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 people such as first responders uh, such as medical um, uh, profession um, but also those being displaced or or you know um, let go of, of jobs so um, including, including ICF, so we created this ICF Coaches for Good initiative. We decided to work with the not-for-profit organizations that uh, suffered either the industries that they uh, represent suffered greatly, or they were supporting um, medical first responders, uh, 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 very, very vulnerable populations. So we... <clears throat> over, I want to say 1,200 coaches around the globe offered their services. And as of the end of August, we, uh, we utilized more than um, 800 hours of professional coaching offered uh, uh, to, to those organizations with great success and with great appreciation. And to me, that, that, uh, uh, that, that does two things. One, again, shows such a phenomenal um, generosity of, of coaches and also the fact that they know that this service now can really, can really be uh, transformational uh, and also something that may just hope, help not to cross to, to the dark side. It's easy to go to the dark side these days. But also, you know, there was a um, unusual opportunity to bring awareness of coaching to some populations that perhaps would not have been as familiar with what we do. 
And that kind of leads me to uh, a conversation around general application of coaching to societal progress. Um, we've been seeing much more of the, again, um, talk about coaching, supporting United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, ICF signed uh, the, uh, the declaration of uh, climate crisis and how coaching can support that. We, ICF Foundation, are working with the UNICEF to support their leadership in um, offering you know, uh, uh, equal access to education, for example. So, so societal sector or social progress sector is growing very fast, as fast as any other sector of the economy. And right now, I think we, we start seeing organizations small and large to uh, use coaching for leadership development and also for supporting the recipients of the, of the help through societal progress organizations. Um, to me, it was just natural that that would happen uh, because we have so much information and great data on effectiveness of coaching, return on investment in coaching, return on expectation in coaching. Um, and again, you know, we are in a circumstance that, that these issues of uh, social progress are being um, talked about, not only at the individual level, not, at the, not only at the not-for-profit level, but so many large corporations do have uh, their social, uh, corporate social responsibility programs. Uh, so many request, in fact, the, um, the uh, uh, reporting uh, about those programs. Uh, stakeholders are interested and paying attention. So again, to me, it, is, it was only a, a matter of time when coaching will, um, in fact, find its way to support organizations uh, and those causes um, alike. So um, I am very excited about seeing a new sector opening up to, to the services of coaches. From let, me, our let me piggyback on your social responsibility, yeah. because not only did we have a nice pandemic going on <laughs> for the whole year, we also had Black Lives Matter, which um, created a whole awareness of um, social responsibility. And I know that ICF created um, uh, an inclusivity statement. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's more, and, and is that just in the United States? Where, where, where is that happening? Yeah. So, um, yes, actually, um, uh, after the events in Minnesota, uh, we did issue a statement against uh, violence, uh, racism, inequality, and injustice. And um, as a, uh, a follow-up to, to that statement, in, yes, in fact, we created a statement on diversity, inclusion, belonging, and justice. And as we, as we had conversations around it, actually as a global organization, we, we are making statements on behalf of, of our membership. And in the United States, Black Lives Matter, of course, is something that, that everybody would recognize now, but those issues are very true in other parts of the world. Uh, it, it, the, the discrimination, the injustice, uh, either based on race, um, gender, religion, economic uh, situation are, are rampant. So, uh, so it is not just you know, specific to the United States. And as we talk more as a leadership of the organization about it, we, uh, we saw a, uh, a need to not you know, make a statement and be happy with it, but to really um, examine what needs to be done and what needs to be done at the level of an individual, at the level of the organization, such as ICF. And frankly, is there something that we need to do about coaching profession? Are we diverse and inclusive? Are we creating space of belonging? 
you know, uh, are, are we truly for equal, um, equality in what we do? So with that, the, uh, the leadership of ICF decided to create a task force, which is co-chaired by um, a member of the global board, Tracy Sinclair, and uh, uh, George Nutu, um, a gentleman from uh, Kenya, who is a member of the independent uh, review board. And uh, this, this task force, uh, which should present its uh, finding in about six weeks, is not creating solutions per se, but to creating a roadmap of how we can make diversity, inclusion, belonging, and justice part of a canvas of ICF as an organization and coaching as a profession. I think this is one of the most important initiatives that, that we um, uh, engaged into. Um, I think that most coaches, if, if asked, would say, of course, we're for those values, value of respect, uh, value of, uh, uh, of uh, equality are already reflected in either the values of the organization or in our code of ethics. And yet, I think that, that definitely it, it's, it's the awareness for the organization as well that some very specific actions, um, initiatives, steps need to be taken in order for us to live that statement in who we are and what we did. Walk the walk, absolutely, yeah. Mm. I, I knew IPEC, I'm not IPEC, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know what my, my group is doing also, but uh, I knew that ICF was gonna be on top of it. I didn't realize you were so on top of it. So there is a task force as we speak uh, working yes. on it. Fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, this is, this is really um, important, again, to know that, um, it's, it's not um, necessarily country or region specific, but um, again, looking, looking much more holistically. And at the same time, you know, when we're talking about what an individual can do, because more and more, and that's, that's not necessarily speaking about ICF, but more anecdotally, I, I uh, find myself speaking to so many people saying, oh, things have to change. We, we can't live like this any longer and yet people would say and i i i don't feel empowered i don't know what to do um so so part of the uh plan i think is to also give people ideas every single one of us matters it could be how you show up with your client right but it could be what you can do as an individual not even necessarily a coach as an individual, what you can do to, to, uh, to be a part of that wave um, of change that it's absolutely necessary. Fantastic, fantastic. I recently Great. signed up for um, something called ICF Advance 2020. What did I sign up for? It sounded cool. <laughs> It's a little late to be asking, Laurie. <laughs> thank well, thank you for your trust in our programming, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, uh, so Advance is a virtual event. We actually started organizing Advances, uh, I want to say five years ago. Uh, and the last couple uh, were virtual, and this one already was planned as a virtual. Who knew, right? They would have to do it that way anyway. Advance is a um, educational um, uh, offering that tackles upon um, what's new and exciting in research. What are the trends in coaching? Uh, it's it's you know it's meant to be on a provocative side a little bit. You know, steal the pot. Uh, let's hear the latest uh, thinking. Let's talk um, about something that maybe is not mainstream. Uh, typical educational offerings uh, for coaches and back to diversity and, and inclusion. In fact, going through the program of this event, uh, there are many, many sessions that will speak to, uh, to, to those issues as well. Um, so, uh, you know, there are, there are really great, uh, this is a great lineup of speakers, presenters, uh, some names you would recognize, some you would not. And that's, 
that's by design because we need to bring fresh thinking, different thinking uh, to, to the mainstream. So uh, I think that that's going to that's gonna be a, a fantastic um, educational and intellectual really uh, opportunity for, um, for a, a dialogue as well. You know, it's, it's created in a way that there is time for listening and absorbing. There is time for um, offering input and there is time for reflection and, and conversation uh, in that construct. So it's starting at the beginning of October and um, uh, it is a virtual event. So um, please do check it on our website, coachfederation.org uh, in under events and uh, see, see, the, uh, see the program. Uh, there is a, a, a good number of CCE hours that you can gain by participating in the event as well. So uh, thank, you for, thank you for signing up already. And, um, and I would uh, invite everybody to, to check it out because uh, I know there is not a shortage of, of events being available online these days, but this is, this is very carefully curated. Uh, and also, you know, uh, we were of course planning it a good year ago, but with, with the pandemic and all these changes in our lives, the programming has been adjusted as well to be the most relevant uh, to our members. Great, I'm excited. Tara, you have any questions for Ms. Magna? We have like six and a half minutes left. Oh, wow. I know. Oh, wow, that went quickly. No, this has been really informative. I mean, what I'm finding is <clears throat> with all of this going on, that as a coach, I'm wearing a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. You know, it, some of it, you know, when you look at the code of ethics and what, what here we are, and this is, you know, what we're doing, I'm finding the lines are becoming a little blurred, especially during this time. People, I think, want consoling. Um, they want more empathy. I think you know, although we don't give advice, you kind of, they, they, they want something. Um, and I, I just wonder about, you know, where, how far we can push the apple over here. <laughs> You know, in, uh, you, you said the word empathy. I think that this is exactly what everybody is longing for. Um, and it's, it's such, a, such an interesting um, paradox because on one hand, we all um, are really struggling a little bit, even, even if it's unconscious. Um, we, we hear, you know, especially now, so many months into it, uh, COVID rage, COVID uh, fatigue, COVID frustration, COVID depression. Oh my God, right? Nobody talks about COVID right. joy. So... Right. So, so this is this is very true that this, uh, uh, especially prolonged time of pandemic, is taking a toll. It's taking a toll on on the resilience. It's taking a toll on our patience. Um, so even more so, there is that need for uh, for a hug, right? When we mm -hmm, can't have mm -hmm, a hug. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I think that that um, uh, my, my personal opinion would be that we, we need to do what's needed for our clients, even if sometimes it's sitting with them and listening and, and, and just, just being there. You know, we don't, um, in, in a business environment, we do hear that people are actually willing to be more, to come back a little bit to this more directive style just tell me what I need to do. You know, a uh, very interesting article I read recently had a headline, uh, prepare to be unprepared. Uh, right. And, and where, where it went was that because our circumstances are still so fluid, planning for more than two months in advance, it's a much, maybe very interesting intellectual exercise, but that's about it. Uh, we need to be able to move, you know, change on a dime, just like that, which again, adds more stress and anxiety. So for me, as long as we are not crossing a line to step into a medical space of uh, therapy, um, 
psychoanalysis, psychiatry, um, then I think being, being uh, um, empathetic and vulnerable with our clients is what we need to do. Thank you. And, and with that, what I would say is, and, and I mentioned that uh, earlier with the, with the resources that we created for coaches, coaches have to take care of themselves. Right. Right? Right. We need that empathy as much mm -hmm. as any other person. Right. And to be able to give our best to our clients, we need to, we need to, we need that space for self care again, more so than, than ever. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very well put. I'm saying it's getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, that too. You know, um, because that's, that's where we're at. Mm. So. Well, Lori, how are we doing? We got two, two, a little bit over two minutes. Wow. But I, I think um, I'm so glad you mentioned self-care because mm -hmm. I know I go through, it's like, oh, I got this. And then the next or the next hour, I mean, I won't even give myself a day, you know, and it's like, oh, things to see what's going on. So it's finding the, um, the opportunities in this whole thing. It's like em embracing the change, absolutely. And finding the opportunities. Like I would ha normally have to wait for you to come to um, New York City. To <laughs> right. And right. here we are. Right. Exactly. And you could have been anywhere. And you usually are. You're usually in a town, a city, a state, or a country. <laughs> so um, there are things that are good. Um, and I think it's going to be maintaining a little bit of faith uh, that coaches especially if you can get it together are being called to like never before they're being yes. really summoned out and it's like yeah it's all important now and we can kind of help you get there uh, or we can at least hold your hand while you're getting there and and i think this is a great opportunity for coaches and i'm thrilled to hear that icf is stepping up to um right. Yeah. The challenge. It's mm -hmm. just so good to be a part of the organization mm -hmm. and yes. know that, okay, totally. we're, in, we're in there. Yeah. yeah. So I, I will give you the last minute, oh, um, Magna, and what do you got to say in a minute to, to the people around the world? <laughs> I thank you for your statement, Lori, because I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think that, that um, coaching is needed right now more than ever. Um, coaches are needed more time than ever, and we actually are making a difference. Yes. We're, we're making a difference. We're making a sustainable uh, difference. We are, uh, we are uh, uh, supporting our clients, our families, communities, systems, whatever they are, uh, in a way that I don't know if there is anything else they can do in the same way. So, in my last minute, I want to thank every single one of professional coaches, ICF members, credentialed coaches, everybody who is, um, who is making themselves available in so many different ways to, uh, to raise awareness of coaching, to provide professional service again, in a time that, that is um, important. And, and I, I, I truly think that we're going to uh, emerge uh, from this crisis stronger as a profession and as an organization. But primarily, huge, huge thank you. We are thrilled to have you at the helm. And yes, Terry, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and, you, Lori. And we will, we will welcome you back anytime. Take yeah. care. Thank you Take so care. much. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye.